from outlining military strategies to storming battlefields the history remembers a great number of female warriors princesses and queens who not only with their remarkable skills and abilities made consistent contributions to their kingdoms but also played a vital role in mobilizing larger armies and defeated their enemies in the midst of the battle india too has its own share of indomitable women who prove themselves to be fierce fighters and skilled leaders and one of them was nike devi the goan princess who went on to become the chalukya queen of gujarat and defeated the ghorid army in the battle of kasrada if you have not subscribed our channel we will appreciate you to subscribe it and leave a comment with your questions and opinions the year was 1173 and the young ghorid prince mohammad Shahabuddin Ghori had just conquered the Ghaznavids in Afghanistan being an ambitious ruler as he was he soon looked towards east with an aim to penetrate deep into northern and central india after capturing multan and uch he turned southwards towards the southern rajputana and gujarat his new target was the prosperous fortified town of anilwara established by the vanraj of the chawla dynasty in the 8th century anilwara was capital of the chalukya also known as the sulankis according to american historian tertius chandler the ancient citadel was the 10th largest city in the world in the year 1000 with a population of approximately 100000 people The city was under the rule of Mulraj II who had ascended the throne as a young boy after the death of his father Ajaypal faced with internal and external challenges the boy king could have been easily exploited by the court politics if it was not for his mother the Naiki Devi who took over the affairs of the kingdom as queen regent and proved to be a strong guiding force for the future king the daughter of the kadamba king of goa naiki devi was well trained in sword fighting cavalry military strategy diplomacy and all other subjects of state craft undaunted by the prospect of ghori's imminent attack she took command of the chalukyan force and threw herself into organizing a well planned opposition to the invading army naiki devi also sent out emissaries to forge crucial partnerships and requested assistance from nearby provinces for help including prithviraj chauhan while these kingdoms did not accede to her request she did receive aid from chalukyan feudatories such as the leaders of the nadula chahmana clan the jalar chaman and the arbuda parmara realizing that this wasn't enough to defeat the massive hordes of enemy soldiers naiki devi carefully planned a battle strategy that would even out the odds she chose the rugged terrain of ghadar ghat an area at the foot of mount abu near the village of kasrada in the modern day sirohi district as the site of the battle The narrow hill passes of Ghadar Ghat was unfamiliar ground for the Turkic army. As soon as the army was about to enter into the open mouth of the narrow footpath, they found themselves blocked by the main Chalukyan army. Moreover, Ghori was unaware that he had already been routed by the Chauhan army from the left and the Parmar army from the right. unable to maneuver openly on either sides he was stuck in between with the thinly stretched line naiki devi had outmaneuvered mohammad of ghor with a brilliant move the queen rode into the battle with her son beside her and ordered an all out charge the ghorid's vanguard 
still unorganized and their lines out of formation, tried to form a shield wall, but as soon as they were met by the enemy's elephant vanguard, the lines abruptly cracked open. Helpless and unable to find a gap, many were crushed by the elephants, while those holding the second line were crushed by the retreating men and a large number of them died of suffocation. Those who still survived fell to Rajput's spears and swords, with the army trapped from all sides. Ghori's men were nothing more than the sitting ducks. Sensing the defeat, Ghori managed to find a gap for a retreat and fled with a handful number of his bodyguards, while his men were still being slaughtered at the battlefield. By the late afternoon, the onslaught finally came to an end with hundreds and thousands of trapped Ghorid men lying dead on the dust. The queen had scored a great victory for her empire, though she was widely forgotten in the later ages, but her legend stayed alive in the local Gujarati folklore and chronicles, and today she is viewed as one of the greatest female warriors of the ancient world and the Indian history. As for Muhammad of Ghor, the Turks were taken at such a surprise that once Ghori fled back to his land, he never returned back to Gujarat again. Instead, he consolidated the remaining Ghaznavi lands into his empire and concentrated his attention towards Chauhan dynasty of Prithviraj Chauhan. Following the first and the second battles of terrain in 1191 and 1192.